Welcome everyone. Welcome to the second unit of the first week. My name is Edda. I am a strategic design consultant at the App House in Heidelberg and I work together in a team uh, with Matthias, who you know already from the introduction. And Matthias and myself, uh, we did quite a lot of customer assignments on innovation culture together and we will walk you through the next units of the course. And in this uh, unit, it's all about people. Uh, you also heard from Andreas that people is, is the important factor to make uh, innovation real and to kind of um, get this innovation culture into your organization, you focus on people. And um, the purpose and the goal of this first unit is to understand um, how do you put a team together what does it mean when Andreas was talking about a diverse team and um, how do you work with such a team? Now, why do we have diversity as an important principle for innovation culture? Because high performing teams require a diverse mix of perspectives, skills and experiences. So if you want to boost team performance, you need to put your team together in a very diverse way with different perspectives um, because the more complex a problem is that you need to solve, the more perspectives in a team you would need for that. And um, yeah, what kind of personalities you need in such a team? Um, so here we can, we talk usually about T-shaped people. So T-shaped people, it's kind of a metaphor to describe the abilities of persons in the workforce. So you have the, the T that is describing everybody and your vertical bar of the letter T is the depth of the related skills and experience that you personally have in a certain field. So for example, for myself, I. I am um, I'm experienced in, in, in computer science and also in, in uh, business management. But then you have the vertical uh, part of the T and uh, this is uh, what are like the expertises to collaborate across disciplines and with other experts in the team. So for example, for myself, I'm a design thinking coach and expert and, and um, I also know a lot about I, I have been a product owner, I know a lot about the agile methodologies and um, these are things that are also on this broad knowledge uh, bar of the team. So how does such a multidisciplinary team look like? We heard that um, we need uh, technical expertise, we need business expertise and also design expertise in such a team. Um, of course, Every kind of project team has a project manager, but um, in addition, here um, you see we also have a coach in such a team, an innovation coach. And um, we will go later a bit more in detail what, uh, what the role of such a coach is and, and why we need this coach in a team like that. Now, besides the different expertises, um, you also have the different personalities in such a team. And um, uh, it's important that you have a good mix of personalities in such a team, but there's also a lot of, let's say, um, cliches and, uh, about such personalities and not everybody is, uh, works perfectly together with everybody from a personality perspective. But um, it's important to understand what kind of personalities you have in such a team. For example, what kind of personality traits? There are different, um, let's say, studies that exist in order to find out what personality you are. Um, and these things like there is, for example, the Myers-Briggs model, or um, but, uh, we also anal analyze, use this once to analyze the personalities in our team. And the important the important thing is that you understand the different personalities, that you create empathy for them, and um, that uh, instead of just, um, you know, believing in cliches and judging them about it. But um, it's worth to have this kind of mixture in the team um, to boost your team performance and to deal with these different personalities. And the most important thing is just don't... Um, um, 
um, build your team just with one type of personality. And uh, besides the personalities, we also have uh, every team, of course, has a certain focus. So um, here you see two types of focuses that such a team can have. Uh, one is the innovation focus, maybe more, and the other one here we explain just as an example, more on having a team having more an implementation focus. So it's not that you have this team or that team. Usually teams have kind of both uh, focuses, but there could be a, um, a, a certain direction in a team. So for example, if you have an innovation focus, it's uh, more um, that you focus on exploring and experimenting. And um, I think very characteristic for such a team, it's also that they have to deal with a high level of uncertainty and ambiguity because they don't really know where it's going to and what will come out of their project at the end. So they work very creatively creatively and that uh, for example they have this need of a high diversity and an intensive collaboration on the other hand um, to make innovation real we also need teams with an implementation focus so they really have to create whatever a product a service and they have to more handle handle the different resources and uh, they need to work very eff effectively to create such an outcome of course, um, they also are creatively, but maybe in a different kind of way. And they, they need this high competency in the team and as well a very good collaboration. Now, our App House team, you see here, it's, it's, a, it's a bit an older picture, but um, uh, yeah, we have this, we are a team, we have both focuses, we drive innovation um, from our team, uh, within uh, SAP, but also uh, uh, with our customers. But on the other hand, we uh, are running in innovation projects as well. And um, we also implementing together with other teams at SAP, we are implementing innovative solutions. When you want to build up an innovation team on your own or um, in your organization, um, we have a tool created that's called Spectrum, and it's a tool to build innovation teams in a very collaborative way. So um, this uh, Spectrum you will also find um, within the Innovation Culture Toolkit that uh, Andreas already mentioned. So it's also available there so that you can check it out. And um, the idea of this um, approach is that you start with a vision of the team, and then you see what kind of skills and personalities you have in the team that help you to fulfill this vision and where you maybe have legs and where you might need different skills and we, you might need uh, people to hire people um, with those skills to complete your team. And um, so that you have this uh, innovation uh, team set up for, 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 uh, to fulfill your vision. And it's also in a very human-centered way that um, that this uh, that the way how you put this uh, how you approach the skills and how you put this together and it's also something that you iterate so it lives uh, it's not it's, uh, something that you do one time but you um, you iterate and you update it from time to time together with your team yeah so we went through uh, a first uh, the first uh, few um, uh, lessons, let's say. <laughs> now let's take a reflection. Um, and, and maybe for you, we, we uh, encourage you through the whole course when we present something that you also reflect on it and you see how, um, how this, uh, this is uh, handled in your organization. So we, we would like to invite you to now um, uh, press the pause button and take a quick reflection um, and, and some time and on the question, for example, what is the vision of your team you have right now, the team that you are in? Um, what skills and personalities do you need to fulfill that vision? And how are they represented in your team? And do you have all those uh, skills and personalities or are some of them missing? And of course, you're also welcome to check out Spectrum while you're reflecting on that.
And now um, we would like uh, to go a little bit de deeper into the teamwork and also into how a coach facilitates teamwork. And for this, I would like to hand over to my colleague, Matthias. So Matthias, can you give us some insights how, the, how this teamwork looks like in a diverse team? Absolutely. Thank you, Edda. So um, teamwork is always a challenge. You know that, I know that. Um, but especially also in diverse teams, it's a, it's a big challenge because um, in spite of having T-shaped people, as Edda um, has explained it, so people, people with broad knowledge, which also um, can speak the same language, you still have a lot of differences. So people are typically coming with different backgrounds, from different business units, from different cultures as well. And um, it's a challenge to overcome this. Also, when we talk about innovation, the people might have their expert knowledge. There might be um, expert developers. There might be expert project managers, um, uh, business experts, um, designers. But they might not uh, be skilled in uh, innovation methodologies. So um, there is somebody required who helps the team to work together and also who helps the team to run through such an innovation process. And this is ex exactly the role of an innovation coach, an innovation coach who facilitates teamwork who guides the team and who fosters this culture of innovation. So if we take a deeper look, a detailed look on uh, the jobs to be done as a coach, um, one thing is to create the right work, work and environment. And that starts with really um, uh, taking care of what is in the room. Do we have enough pencils? Do we have enough post-its? Do we have um, uh, space to collaborate in the right way? Do we have the right tools? Um, so that is, that is something the, the innovation coach has to take care of. Also to keep the team productive, so th to help the team to really um, uh, work together, to um, take care of that the energy is high in the team and um, that also there is some kind of um, inspiring and creativity, uh, um, inspiration and creativity enough so that the team can also um, come up really with new perspectives and new ideas. And um, overall, um, this innovation process, um, I mean, this is, there's a lot of new things which appear. Overall, this is like a learning process for the team. And um, the role of the team coach, of the innovation coach, is to facilitate this kind of learning process. And not only the team is learning, also the coach herself is learning. So um, um, as we do it here as well in the course, um, as, a, as a coach, um, it makes sense to reflect from time to time on your own role, to um, collect feedback from others and to, to learn and grow um, yourself as well in that role. So um, I really like this, this quote from Mahatma Gandhi, actually, um, because um, as an as co innovation coach, you are somebody who, um, who drives change and who helps the team to change and to um, uh, do things differently. But that requires also as a coach that you um, go forward as a role model and act as a role model. So um, that is a, a precondition, a prerequisite. And um, um, that's very important to act as a role model as an innovation coach. What other behaviors are important? Um, do not condemn. So um, a coach is always neutral um, in, in that part and um, doesn't have an opinion when it comes to results and um, doesn't, um, let's say, um, talk negative about results. Um, that's, that's not the role of the, the coach. Also, this do not feel in charge of the results. So it, it can become quickly, you can become quickly the role that you um, become some kind of mother who has to take over all the things as a coach and that is something you need to prevent. It's the team um, which has um, the, the mission to, um, to uh, uh, create, um, design an innovative solution. It's not your task, you help the team to fulfill this mission. Um, it helps a lot um, as a coach behavior if you appreciate the work of the people and, um, of course, be authentic. So um, uh, don't, uh, let's say, um, start to act very artificial or play somebody else. Try to be how you are. And very connected to this is also that it's totally okay that you de develop your own, your own style. So um, um, if you're not like the very extroverted guy, um, you don't, don't have to like now act in that role and, and play a role which, which is really not, where you may maybe also don't feel comfortable about it. And um, the last thing I, I would, would like to highlight about coach behaviors is this preparation. Preparation is key. So um, get, for example, if you're planning a team session or a workshop, Get in the evening before in the room, check is everything there, 
um, have a prepared agenda, check if um, everything works out, if, um, uh, let's say, all the people got the invitation, all the stakeholders are involved, maybe. Um, be prepared. Nevertheless, it's a, it's a, it's a journey. Um, you can't predict what happened. You also must be flexible to adjust on the fly and um, have some kind of um, feeling um, what method, what actions are uh, now needed in exactly this moment. So you always have to be, um, uh, have to be um, present in the room and know what's happening and be able to act and not stick then to your prepared ag agenda. Um, uh, that's, that's also not, not uh, a desired behavior of a coach. So um, now again, a moment to reflect. So um, you know how it works. Press the pause button um, um, and reflect a bit on yourself. Um, if you would be a coach, what do you think would be like strengths of yourself? What would be um, something where you can help your team as a coach? Also, um, what what does probably uh, what, what is a challenge for you? If you would um, be a coach, what what would be challenging for you? What kind of kind of weaknesses do you have? And overall, when you think about that yourself as an innovation coach, how do you feel like this? Is this something um, which inspires you? Is it? It's also okay if you feel like maybe that's not the role I I would like to have in such an innovation context. That's fine too. Just take a minute. Reflect on this, maybe take some notes if you would like, and then continue. Now we talk about teams and something which is really essential about uh, teams is teamwork. It's not something given. Um, and um, teamwork is also, um, you can say it's like a, like a roller coaster journey. So it's a, a journey of different emotions. Um, so um, of course you will have some highs where you um, um, have some come up with great insights or great ideas, but you will also have some lows uh, where um, maybe also some conflicts in the team which you have to um, overcome and where you still have to um, uh, stay together as a team. And um, especially when we deal with um, innovation, there's a lot of uncertainty involved. So you cannot predict what will happen. You cannot predict how the solution will work in the end, how, what kind of um, um, challenges appear in the, in the future. You, you can't know everything. And um, this causes uncomfortability in the team. So the team feel, will feel uncomfortable, will feel uncertain, and that as a coach, you need to help the team in that situations to um, to sustain and to um, keep on keep on focusing um, on on what is actually the the task to do, and um, as a coach, um, let's say um, you have an open eye for um, what's happening in the team. You um, you need to be the one who, who uh, senses when there are conflicts um, and when there are challenges, and you need to make the team aware of this because otherwise you can solve it. So this you are the one. Um, who need to he do, need to bring that on the table, and it's worth it to invest in team building. So um, uh, good teamwork, teams which which work together, um, they um, create better results. They create quicker um, results and uh, results with a better quality. And there are so, some things um, which which help to um, uh, foster this team building. So one easy thing is that um, uh, uh, the team should give um, themselves a name because um, then they identify with it, they, they stick together um, as a team, and um, this unites the team also in a way. Also to decorate um, the space um, is something the team can do so that they feel comfortable, also that they have some kind of home base where they meet. Um, it's important also to, to consider to um, agree on team rules um, where everybody can refer to, especially when we, um, we, we talk again about um, conflicts or difficult situations. It's, it's, it's always good to have these rules in place. Um, in the beginning, um, it's, it's important that everybody gets to know each other um, and, and uh, really um, overcomes very quickly um, when there is shyness or anything so that they um, get closer to each other. And um, uh, a technique to um, get the team Team in the right mode, which is necessary, are uh, warm-up exercises. So warm-up exercises, there you can you can look in the internet um, for it. There are really a lot of warm-up exercises available, um, which really help the team maybe to um, 
uh, get to know each other, so-called icebreaker um, um, warm-up games, or to get in a creative mode. Um, uh, so, um, or maybe after a typical thing is after after a lunch break, you feel um, tired and you feel maybe um, uh, uh, have not not enough energy, and then it would be good to do like a, a physical warm-up together, like a little sports exercise to to get active again. And these warm-ups are something which which helps the team to to uh, to really be to really work in a good way together. Um, this conflict topic um, I mentioned already, speak um, about conflicts as early as possible, and team check-ins and check-outs are important as well in this context. So take some time for the team to come together and to also talk about um, teamwork, talk about how ev everybody feels, how ev everybody experienced maybe a day or experienced um, a week so far, to be, um, to be really, um, uh, um, let's say, um, transparent about what's happening in the team and to be able also to, to deal with issues which when they come up. And last but not least, um, innovation is also about having fun. Without fun, uh, we wouldn't have like um, great ideas. Um, and um, by the way, we also hope that you have fun in, in uh, our Open SAP course and um, that this also sparkles new ideas um, uh, in, your, in your head and in your context. So, this was now um, the, the second unit. Um, what are the key takeaways you should keep in mind? First of all, diversity. Innovation teams need to be diverse. Um, an innovate, uh, innovation team um, that can really can benefit from a coach, which helps the team to um, go through the innovation approach, but which also helps helps the team to work together. And um, it is really worth to invest in team building with certain activities, certain mindsets, certain behaviors. Okay, last but not least, um, it's also again um, time for reflection. Take some time for yourself. Think about uh, a warm-up or a team check-in you want to try out with your team. Um, maybe you, you browse a bit in the internet um, and uh, find, uh, find a warm-up and then you do it and observe how people react to it. And um, maybe, maybe uh, it works out and you can see some changes in the people. And, um, but this is the way um, how to do it, just try it out. So this was um, the second unit. In our next unit, we will talk about um, uh, the innovator's mindset. So um, what is the mindset innovators um, had and how can you use that mindset um, and how can you bring that mindset to your teams?